Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast for the week of June 30th, right on the precipice of July. Very exciting. One of your hosts, Elijah, sitting across from me digitally, as always, of course, Alex. Hello, my fellow camp counselor. Oh, yes, you're in the spirit. Uh, we yeah. will get into why later, but before we do that, remember, you could do all the things that you could do on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, and podcast services, you could do a five-star review, but... We begin the show with a rapid fire. Rapid fire is very light today. And then we're going to get into what we've been playing. Alex, mm. rapid fire Persona 5 Royal release on PS5, Xbox, and PC, and assumably Switch, will feature all 45 DLC packs included with purchase. Very cool. You will get all of that DLC. It is a lot of costumes. Mm. It is a lot of personas from previous games. Very exciting. Yes. Last rapid fire. Today, as of recording, Stadia, Geoforce Now, and Xbox Cloud Gaming will be on select Samsung TVs, which we've covered multiple times, 2022 mm-hmm. models only. So the newest of new Samsungs will be able to play. I will be honest, I did not know <clears throat> Geoforce Now was going to be on there. I did hear was Stadia was going to be, but I didn't know for sure, but I knew f- for a fact Cloud Gaming was going to be on there. So now we know Stadia, Geoforce Now, and Xbox Cloud mm-hmm. Gaming, which... I'll say it. Surprise Stadia is on there. Um, I wonder if this was a previous deal before Google stopped caring about Stadia, but hey, who knows? Hmm. Oh, I was going to say, if you had a Samsung TV, would you use all three or just the Xbox one or would you even to put me Cause I, even, even Stadia, like even with Stadia now, like we can we have access to Stadia, but. We don't use it, so it's because like, we're like... Mm. Right, yeah, I don't have an inclination to play Stadia just because I have so many services. Yeah. I, pay, I pay for uh, Game Pass, I pay for mm-hmm. PlayStation, and you and me pay for Nintendo Switch Online. Correct. So that's three services where I have a lot of games, and mm-hmm. Studi- Stadia doesn't have exclusives, so I don't yeah, have a reason true. to turn it on. Uh, they did for a while, and a bunch of games bowed out i believe quarry was actually supposed to be a stadia exclusive but they really? yeah they canceled the deal i i want to i want to say that's true i think that's an exclusive i want i mean i think that was a while ago from i think i want to say colin moriarty said that i like i, I want to say months ago and then mm-hmm. there was two other games i'm it, it escapes me leave in the comments if you guys know um but that was the rapid fire for the week going into quickly corrections and then we're going to get into what we've been playing alex <clears throat> Corrections, mm. there's two things this week. One's a self-correction. Another one is really just a cool comment that we got. So on the uh, Hassan Karaman Blue Box Conspiracy video that we did, I had a great conversation mm. with one Cold Fortune that has a that gave me a giant debrief on all of the Hassan Karaman stuff. Now, this is not <clears throat> on our Blue Box initial video. This is on Who is Hassan Karaman, which was recorded, I want to say, three months ago when he was doing like, his big interview things he was doing <clears throat> go check it out it's just a really cool breakdown that he gave me over the couple months that i guess that yep. this uh um uh, person has done a lot of research and looked at everything that Hassan Karaman has said and everything he said was pretty definitive <clears throat> i have not completed my uh research until we do the next Hassan Karaman video which we i'm sure we will but i haven't completed yeah. everything he has given me uh or she has given me so i don't know um, if every single thing was correct, but everything I looked at was <clears throat> spot on the money. So go check out that comment. It's literally a comment in our video, and it's very long, and it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. So go check it out. Second correction, game director of Overwatch 2. This is a self-correction I've given myself because I think I've said the opposite, or I said I didn't know, or and it's just been a very confusing thing. Game director of Overwatch 2 had an AMA on Reddit, uh, and he stated that Overwatch 2 is going to replace Overwatch 1. Now, this is the opposite of what we were told when overwatch yeah. 2 was announced these were supposed to be two different services but <laughs> overwatch one people could play with overwatch two people but now it is a complete it will be replaced now assumably because it's now free to play yeah no i i i wonder if there's just going to be like an uh, like a patch in or a complete like uh, like an upgrade thing i think they're going to talk more later but It seems that they expect, um, and this is a direct quote, when Overwatch 2 launches on October 4th, it will be a replacement for the current live service. So it will be replaced. So I'm assuming when Overwatch 1, maybe it will be now just a redirect to Overwatch 2. I don't know. 
they didn't get into the specifics like how will the skew work of Overwatch One, but like, well, will I have to delete the Overwatch One that's download? What and, yeah, yeah, that's why. Think so? Maybe, assuming just as long as you, it's it's the same account, it's just links all your progress. So that's like probably, all your purchases that's and everything. Point, so yeah. now you just won't ever have to download Overwatch One again. Yeah, because I guess Overwatch Two is now free. So you download two, and then whatever one is just probably mm -hmm. doesn't exist so anymore. The, I guess play, the free to play will be called just Overwatch, and then the the the, the campaign thing will be Overwatch Two. I don't know. That would make more sense, but I doubt that's what they're going to do. They're probably yeah. going to do the much more confusing way, <clears throat> and it's just all Overwatch 2 for yeah, some it's, strange it's, reason. It's the simplistic thing we think of. We're like, no, they're probably going to do the They're more, probably going to do the harder part of that. Yeah. 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 Jesus. Uh, and that is everything for Rapify and Correction, so we're going to get in one single question that I ask every single week to Alex. It is, what have you been playing? So, I stopped by my local GameStop. Okay. And I was like, I've been wanting to play something. And I saw that they had a pre-owned copy of The Quarry. And I've been really interested in this game because I'm like, you know, it gives me that horror, you know, uh, uh, movie feel. Like, you know, the Nightmare on Elm Street or uh, Friday the 13th feeling, you know. Very Friday the 13th. Uh, yeah, oh, for sure. I mean, you could camp counselors, things like that. So I was like, you know what? It's I'll give it a shot. I'm half, at least I assume I'm halfway through the game. I love every minute of it so far. Every, I oh, okay. I haven't had any complaints. Like the story has had me like on edge the whole time. I'm like, oh god, what's gonna happen? What decision do I make? What do I do? This this door this play this person's cool. I like the setting, the camera angle of what they have you on looks like feels like you're in a movie. Like it, everything is awesome. Now I love it. I want to. I I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this. You have not played Until Dawn or Dark Pictures. I have not. So you're pretty new to this. That's kind of cool yeah. that you like it so much. I'm curious. Yeah. That's why I was like, I, well, I I want to go back to those games, cause, but I'm, my worry is, will I like them because there are they are older titles. They're not going to be as new as this one. So, you know, they've learned from those games to incorporate in this one. So, like, if I go back to the other ones, are they not going to be as good? Like, uh, that's my issue. That's a good point. I, I want to say... Um... A lot of people liked the dark pictures one. I think they dip okay. ever so in quality. Until Dawn mm -hmm. was um, uh, back when like this was still novelty. Like it was like, oh, you get to play a movie. So I, I remember that was mm -hmm. like the big selling point of that. I feel like you would like Until Dawn if you're super into this. Yeah, the dark I pictures. Really there's dark picture games where I've heard they are really good. Mm -hmm. I want to say the second one was really good or something. One of them yeah, was kind of. Eh. There's Little Hope and then there's House of Ashes. I think House of Ashes was the one people liked a lot. And that's the third one. Now, I will say, uh, this is a lot of stuff now. So, like, since you love this so much, you should definitely try one of them. But yeah. then, like, they're all basically the same. So, like, you might get, uh, what's the word? Uh, you might get burned out of them. No, yeah. And, I, like, it's crazy because I even found for each one of those dark pictures, I have found like a little sentence of what each one is about. And I'm like interested now. Oh, okay. And I, I want to say they hint that this is all one universe, I think. So you get like that kind of cool thing. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they've said that. I know for sure. Of course there are pictures is, but I want to say that they've hinted that this is supposed to be one thing that it's all happening mm -hmm. in, which is kind of cool. No. Yeah. That's definitely cool. Um, but yeah, so far, I'm like I like it. I like the horror feel. I I tried playing the game just like you know with regular surround sound things like that. But I was I was I have to like have the headphones. Yeah. Because if I feel like I've been more immersed into it, I've had so many times where I do the thing where I'm like, oh god, pause, and I'm like, okay, what decision do I make? And I have to like think about what I'm doing. So far, I have not got anybody killed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't know how hard that is in this one. If I remember I right, it was pretty hard until dawn. I've heard to do that. I've heard this game. You can have. God, who was it? Was it Andy from Kind of Funny? I can't remember who. I somebody. So I was. That was either they. Well, somebody said something to where like they had everybody alive until like the last two or three chapters, and every, and then people just started dying off. And I'm like, Ooh. oh, what did you do? And Ooh. I'm like, and I'm kind of like nervous now because now. I'm on like I'm all like halfway through the game, so like everything's like picking up. There's yeah. things happening, and I'm like, oh no! Every turn is like could screw me over. That reminds me, um, 
of of a lot of games where like the last couple chapters like the gloves come off heavy rains like that where mm-hmm. the last couple it's, um you never finished heavy rain i did like the well, first like maybe two three hours of the game and i never finished it and i want to the story is good I, I will say it's dated so for anyone listening right now who haven't played it i do recommend you try and play it just look up the control scheme before you play this mm-hmm. game because it oh, is yeah, sure. it's kind of rough uh i think you use the right trigger to walk which is mm-hmm. wild that that was a, even a thing now back in, back, was, back in the ps3 it wasn't that it wasn't that bad people yeah. overstate it now it just hasn't aged well but mm-hmm. i love the story of ever i know a lot of people just don't like david cage yeah. i get it but I first tried it when they had the beyond two souls double pack and i want to go back to beyond two souls and heavy rain eventually because i'm like in that mode of like oh decision making so like i kind of want to play all these games now yeah, I, I think the best one overall is Detroit Become Human uh, out of those mm-hmm. three games, but yeah. I do have a soft spot for Heavy Rain, even though yeah. uh, that control scheme is wild. Yeah. Alex, I uh, mm. went back to a game that you'll be surprised, I think, to hear, although I think okay. you saw I was playing it because uh, I had a bunch of questions to ask about this game. It's Cyberpunk. Um, yeah. And we're actually going to be talking about them la- later in the show. Uh, never thought I'd go back to it. I never thought I would either, although I did say I would go back when they did the next gen patch. I think they did that like seven months ago now or something like that. So it's been out for a while, but <laughs> but yeah. I, I, I saw it. We have again, we don't have anything to play. So I was like, I, I don't have anything to lose here. So he <laughs> was at a GameStop just doing this. What yeah. do I, what I have not played. Yeah, so I booted it up. Um yeah. It feels good. It looks good. I walking around. Everything seems fine. There's still plenty of bugs I've encountered. Some wild ones. One of my favorites. I have to see those. So one of my favorites. I've saved all these. I'm gonna send it to you, Alex. One of my favorites is I hear um car crashes. So I'm like, oh, this might be a mission or something. So let's go see what it is. Mm -hmm. And I turn around. I turn this corner, and almost like some sort of jalopy like a car has sunken Mm -hmm. into the ground and is doing this this, and it's freaking out inside of the ground and it's just constantly hitting itself it eventually comes out hits the ground speeds off hits some people and a car and then turns and then just drives away like really fast so that was a pretty wild experience that i was just walking around in the world and saw imagine the people that are just walking on the side of the road they're like (laughs) what is that so that that was a interesting experience now i will say i am I am a bit gripped by the story. Um, I told you. I was like, I was like, it's it's hard because like when I first played the game, I had so many bugs. Jesus, yeah. But you played it at launch, just for everyone to remember. Now but see, the game launch. it wasn't game breaking for me. If anything, anything that happened was hilarious. Like I'd be like coming out of a like some building, and all the trees just start flattening. <laughs> And it was hilarious because I was like, "Whoa, this is like Inception <laughs> shit." Yeah, it's like Matrix or like, something. It was like hilarious. I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna keep going." But like the story was like really like I I, I like the story. Yeah, I am enjoying the story. It is a little strange having. I think it's been long enough, so I'll give a tiny spoiler. Yes. There, yeah. you yeah. you have. I will just say a sort of disease. So mm-hmm. it is very pressing that you do the main story. So it does feel odd when I'm doing side missions for friends mm-hmm. because I will die very soon, probably. But I, I find myself stopping all the time, just like in the open world. And what's what's good and honestly, I, I'm pretty sure they fix this because I don't remember it being this fun. But the guns feel very nice. The guns yes. actually feel pretty good. Like mm-hmm. I have a um, there's something called a smart shotgun that I have found. Mm. This fucking thing. Smart weapons this thing is very fun to use so yeah. achievers if you've ever played titanfall one and two i think it was in two as well yeah, um, yeah. there was a gun called the smart pistol way i think it's literally what it was called and there is this this square that's on your screen and if you hold it in front of people long enough it will put a trigger on them and if you shoot you will kill them so yep, yeah like you had to, you had to hold it on them maybe like just go to them yeah it was like maybe three seconds or something and you you shoot it they will die like if, you, if you're close enough they're, they're, it's an insta kill it's one of the best guns to use because it was really fun and yep. this is basically the same thing but with the shotgun you can see like the pellets like mm-hmm. mark up their body so like the, it'll shoot them in the wow. knees the chest and then one in the head oh that's and cool you shoot it the shotgun when i use the pistol i haven't found a pistol one so if i see i see a pistol one that's an automatic equip but like you can see it like lock on to their individual body parts and you shoot it and you just see them hit the guy it's very satisfying uh Mm -hmm. the um 
I'm a big fan of uh, quick hacks. So like when you can hack people, you can turn off their eyes, which is one of my favorite. You can blind people, which is really cool. You can turn off the drones. You can make turrets fight with you. So there's a lot of satisfying things. I don't know how much of this was available at launch, but the game I'm playing is is relatively good, although the bugs still hamper my experience a good bit. The story is really fun. The gunplay is surprisingly good. I didn't think I'd like it this much. Very excited yep. to eventually get I don't know when I get this, but I want the I want the the um I don't remember what they're called. I think they're called mantis blades, where like you get blades out of your arms. Like, yeah, it, I it's, want that. It's, like a, it's that, like a mod upgrade thing. Yeah, I want that. Whenever I yeah. get that, I feel like I'm gonna have a lot of fun just running around stabbing people with my hand blades. That's, yeah. So, so I want to do that. But aside from yeah. that, I want to play more of the story. I do like Johnny Silverhand. Anytime he's up there, mm -hmm. although um, there are certain times <laughs> where Keanu Reeves is not inflecting properly, so yeah. he has his kind of monotone Keanu Reeves impression. Oh, and he, yeah, there was yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. just like that. He, there was an intense yeah. scene, and he was talking with me, and you could tell he was supposed to raise his voice, but Keanu Reeves is just. <laughs> being keanu reeves at you and it's like i still like it but this is very off-putting because you're just mm -hmm. you're being very serious but you're, you're still in the face you're still keanu reeves so it's very <laughs> yeah, funny i get and he's very it. uh he is very stiff which is crazy because uh uh and i didn't see this when i first played the game but the i feel like it has to be all the, the 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 most recent uh roles that he's done like john wick and things like that like they've all been really stiff yeah and serious so i'm wondering if maybe that could be the case which is jarring because um i will say the facial animation is pretty impressive on some of the mm -hmm. people uh mainly um pan am yeah uh, we were in a car and i was looking at her talk and like mm -hmm. her facial is very impressive for like her yep. entire face is moving when she's sad like she's expressing it through her face i was like wow this is pretty cool um mm -hmm. i just wish this this is such a i i, I want to see the alternate universe where this panned out and like because this would have been the biggest game probably in a very long this would have been skyrim levels of yep. crazy but it just it didn't work out aside from that that's really it that i've been playing um i'll be yep. playing that probably for the next couple days see if i stick with it uh i don't really have any releases coming up that i'm looking forward to i'm playing fire emblem warriors as a new game to be playing not much yeah. to, not much to say about it it's dynasty warriors yep. with fire emblem i'm still in the beginning okay. of the game um i will say uh it, i like um i can't wait to get characters because that's the driver of fire emblem is like eventually you're gonna get a bunch of people to play with yeah it, it, right now i just have one person it's just not nearly as fun and i also it's a mm -hmm. new protagonist too which i'm like uh, i want i want to be people i, be I know. People you know yeah but uh we'll see if i get sold on this guy because he does not seem um very cool i'll say that yeah. <laughs> the quarry is pretty short so i'm if i get a chance i'll probably will finish it tonight um okay, because I'm, wow. like halfway through, I'm halfway through the game it, there's i mean there's I mean, it's not spoiler how many chapters there is, right? No, no, I, no. Okay. I mean, it, it, how long is it? Do you know? Well, there's ten chapters, and when I looked online, it says it could take roughly ten hours. So I'm assuming an wow. hour a chapter. Jesus. Yeah, and I'm already, chapter, I'm already on chapter five. That's pretty short. I mean, that game isn't mm -hmm. isn't the game seventy bucks, right? Uh, is, yes. Right? So the th and it's crazy because there's all so the th you can blow through this game super fast. Or you can take your time because there's collectibles, there's oh, clues. I don't, there's I don't know why. I didn't even think there were collectibles. I don't yeah, know why I thought that. Yeah. There's things called uh, the tarot cards. Oh, that's cool. So it's uh, it's kind of it's it helps kind of with the game. Mm -hmm. uh, the tarot cards you can you can use tarot cards to do something. I'm not, I don't want to spoil because it it's kind of cool how they show it. Okay. But um, these tarot cards kind of help you to see what could protect what's going to happen in the next chapter or potentially so it gives you it, it something happen it gives you kind of little like a little snippet and you're like oh i gotta look out for that and then when that happens you're like okay this is the the tarot card that they were talking about so like like i had a tarot card called the hangman you know the it's just a tarot yeah. card but then there's something happens in the game where like there's something Hang. relatively oh, that relates to that. that's kind of cool yeah so i'm like I like this. This oh. is cool. You are definitely getting me interested in playing this game. Yeah, um, like I'm like I like I said, I bought a pre-owned copy and I was gonna return it, but I'm t I, I'm liking it that I'm, I'm probably gonna buy the, the digital copy just because I'm like they did really good with this. Like 
the only thing is, it's not even a bad thing. It's just off putting when you pause the game. The the character that you're playing as, their face is like zoomed in, like from here to here, and they're just sitting <laughs> there they're doing this. They're doing this. They're like moving around. <laughs> okay. They're, they're just moving around, and yeah. you can move it, but it's very disorienting. It's very like like a uh, uh, kind of like creepy. I'm like, I imagine, right? It, no, it's it's actually very creepy. So I have to pay. I have to tab over to a different page so i don't have to see their face because it reminds me um do you remember pop out behind them because like a horror game or a horror yeah. movie you're doing something and then you 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 would see something in the distance you're like what the fuck was that i feel like that would happen that reminds me of detroit become human do you remember the main menu mm -hmm. yeah, like that was uh uh an, a robot that was becoming sentient Mm -hmm. That was one of the coolest things about the game, where like the ma like you had you could talk to her. It was fucking weird. Like this sounds crazy, like it's, but it's just sitting there and it's just doing this. It's just looking around, like like freaking out, kind of doing this. And I'm like, this is unsettling. I need to move this. Oof. Other, I mean, like it's like it's not bad. It's just like I love that they did that because it gives it the more. At one point of the game, I had goosebumps. Like that's how freaky this game was, Ooh, and I'm like, uh, I, yeah. So I'm like, ooh, because the music. You know the horror movie vibes where it does uh, when something's you feel like something's about to happen, but it's right. not anything crazy. But they do the the thing, boom, like the kind of like intense thing. It does that a lot, and it, I'm like, all right, stop fucking with me. Mm. So, um, it's good. It's very good. Okay, all right. Well, well, definitely Alex singing praises there. I'll be curious to see. It's, um, it's up there as one of the game uh, like for like top for the game of the year. And so far, there's not much, of course, but yeah, but but but. I mean that's still that's still praises, right? Yeah. All right. So we let's get into room roundup. God of War Ragnarok continues to sit in everyone's minds and many people, especially in the PlayStation fan base, that have been starving for any news regarding the anticipated sequel to God of War 2018. This led many insiders saying that they have heard that God of War Ragnarok will have an announcement ready for June 13th. Now, obviously that hasn't happened yet, achievers. Because technically that is today as of recording, but we don't know for sure if this has or has not happened yet. Just for reference, it's about 2 p.m. for us on the Eastern. So th there is still plenty of time of the day, but you imagine this would have been announced relatively early in the day. So I do not think this is going to happen. Um, uh, according to some people with uh, that um, are familiar with Sony, they did push the announcement back last minute for seemingly unknown reasons. This is via Tom Henderson on X uh, Twitter. They have a blog post ready and a video detailing the collector's edition of the game, which will have a one-to-one -one scale of Mjolnir as well as a bunch of other stuff that you expect in a collector's mm -hmm. edition. Corey Barlock has insisted that the game has not been delayed via his Twitter account. So Achievers, it seems we must wait and see so alex uh this was actually a pretty big thing in like the i will say um kind of ecosystem that is gaming right now uh just everyone talking about oh you know uh just really people starving for anything about the game uh so are you, you so you're telling me i can have a one-to-one -one to scale millionaire for a collector's edition yeah that's yeah so that's via tom henderson i, I don't know if he's seen the video or if someone just leaked it to him uh that that's gonna be in it second. it's pretty sick yeah go ahead but um it's pretty it's pretty cool if that is really in the moon here i uh i don't really get into collection edition unless i'm really into the game achievers but i mean if you're telling me there's straight up a copy of mjolnir in this game like that's pretty cool are you uh, saying like one to one skill like this oh yeah yeah that's probably one to one, if not pretty yeah. damn close. Yeah, I forgot you had that. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it, there's uh, nothing but tools in this thing, and it, it's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty sick. Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, Alex, are you with these people? I mean, I, I won't say these people, I guess, but a lot of people were pretty dramatic over the over this week, just needing anything about the game. Uh, I, I, it's been a while since we talked about. It. So, one, do you think it's still releasing this year? Um, and two. Uh, are you starving for any sort of information like everyone else is? Well, I mean, of course. I mean, I'm excited. I want to play the game. You know, I want to see. I want to see something. I want that. I want that. You know, you remember the the God of War uh, announcement they showed, and they just show you. You know, start playing. They start showing playing the game. You're like everybody's freaking out. I just want some. Like, of course, I want that. But like, I can wait because I. I. Hmm. 
people are like worried that this game is not going to be as good because it's like you know different director or is it uh, and you know things like that it's not going to be as big right it's got to work i mean if you love that world you're gonna love the game i think that's pretty so i so i feel like i i don't mind waiting i i feel like i'm like 80 percent sure it's gonna come out november i just i i don't see like i'm wondering if maybe they're thinking we know fans are gonna love this game so do we really have to show them anything right now like we I, like I, so i don't know I, like i'm not going crazy for it i can wait i think i think you hit the nail on the head at the very end there where you said um like they don't have a reason to tell you anything about it right yeah so like why <laughs> like let them come the game yeah so like why 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 tell you right like playstation is in a very envious spot uh, especially if you're xbox or someone like that where like they have an anticipated game and people are frothing at the mouth to just get a trailer not even like they're like they, they know the game's coming out later on they just they want to know like what the like what's the game look like we want to see more about it like so they're just frothing at the mouth for this one game and mm-hmm. why not make them wait longer? Like, they, like you don't lose anything. I don't think anyone goes, well, I haven't seen God of Ragnarok soon, so I'm not buying the game now. Like, I, no one does that. The so people, I, The people who are, are, are doing that, they're like, oh, I'm, you know, where is it? Where is it? I can't wait. To, I want to see something. Then that means they have nothing else to play. That means they're not, they're not interested in anything else in the year. Really? I think, I mean, like, well, I think you're, I think you're kind of right there where, I think the reason the amplification of this God of War Ragnarok stuff is because we have had we have a drought that we haven't had in a long I mean a really pretty much a long time like we've yeah. we're we've gone almost and it's crazy because I I get it I mean I get it like you know there's nothing that's not their problem that's not their fault yeah that's not their problem <laughs> and also they probably don't care you know what I mean like yeah, no for sure so yeah. Like, they- I feel like that's why we got that Elder Scrolls Six or that uh. Uh, that fable announced or the mass effect announcement just because people kept talking about it be like oh my god where is it oh my god where is it eventually they're like here man just leave me alone <laughs> like yeah I like i think that's crazy like, like, if, if people would have stopped bitching excuse my french <laughs> and we would have gotten that yeah i'll be i'll be curious to see when they finally reveal this and and i think uh, and also cory bollock actually tweeted out around the time i think it was like i think it was like midnight eastern time or something uh Mm -hmm. he just tweeted out like hey like be patient we will show you as Mm -hmm. soon as we can and i honestly i i believe him i think i think as soon as he can he's going to show you guys something Mm -hmm. all right alex um i'm having some jittering on my end i don't know if it's my internet or not do you mind restarting discord while i do this next one it's that too yeah yeah i i I think it's you but we'll see if you uh, you do a quick restart because i know you won't have anything to say about this this next one Uh, this is according to jeff grubb we should be getting a metroid prime remastered for switch two and three will be coming at a later date so apparently there will be a standalone metroid prime remaster coming for switch and then there will also be two and three at some point later on now metroid prime 4 has been long in the background of Nintendo thing, I think Nintendo has been doing this with a lot of their games, uh, Birth of Wild 2 and uh, Bayonetta 3. They, they're just in the background and we're not seeing a lot about them and we're not getting too, too much, um, too much else to really talk about. So having just these prime remasters coming, I think it's going to revitalize a lot of people for the Switch. I think a lot of people are getting a little thirsty on the Nintendo Switch side of things. Like I'm sure they want more games so these primes will probably satiate some of that demand because it's been a while since switch has had those big meaty games that people are probably craving okay it looks like it's a little bit it's better definitely, it's definitely it's definitely better it's, it's a little jittery for some reason but yeah. it's it's maybe definitely better connection maybe maybe I, I i this happened um to me remember last episode for some reason comcast was mm-hmm. like you don't get internet right now and they just turned there it, it off, goes so. i think it's i think it cleared up a little you're, bit you're clearing up definitely it's yeah. definitely better yep um yeah. moving on alex's uh, most anticipated mm. title of 2022 
Skull and Bones, the long scrutinized game Skull and Bones, had some rumors over the week stating that the game is set to release much sooner than most people probably expected. Before we get that, according, uh, sorry, before we get to that, according to Tom Henderson writing for Try Hard Guys, quote, sources have said that Ubisoft is preparing to re-reveal Skull and Bones during the week of July 4th, end quote. That would have been all um, uh, for me to talk about, except for a user named at Lumia Italia tweeted just this um and this was a twitter account post i don't know this person so i i don't know the legitimacy i will get into why i believe this um right after but he uh, this person just tweeted this quote skull and bones 2022 november 8th to which tom henderson replied with just a check mark skull and bones has had multiple revisions since it started development in 2013 then being revealed in 2017 at Ubisoft's E3 event, they're going completely silent until very recently when they re-revealed the game. Alex, Skull and Bones should be seeing something very soon and then apparently will be released November 8th. All things going well for them. What do you think of Skull and Bones re-revealing and the very, tum- I mean, very tumultuous, at least seemingly, development of this game? I feel like who people are remotely enjoy um, that one game, uh, War of Warships or War of Tanks oh, things. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. War, yeah. I feel like they're going to love this game. Yeah. I don't think this is the game for us. I don't think so either. We, I think we, we, we thought this was going to be a completely different game. We did. I think uh, everyone thought, did, honestly. We thought it was going to be a more realistic like art style uh what sea of thieves is you know you know you have your own ship you get to run around you get to do this you get to do that i think it's just a uh like you know how you know there's dog fighting like games like air you know um what's the airplane one called um air it's like an air the air combat game um, oh ace combat is that what you're thank you thank you it's like it's like this is the the ship version of ace combat yeah i think i think I agree. it's not my type of game yeah, I think I this is. I, I I don't think so. I think this is as close as a World of Tanks that you're gonna give for pirate ships, probably. Um, I yeah. my want for this game is at a zero. I I don't care anymore. I've stopped caring honestly. Um, yeah, because they they've made it clear that they are not making Black Flag, but mm-hmm. just with ships. They yeah, are making they- just ships. You know what I mean. If there comes a time, if there comes a an opportunity to where I'm like I can play it, I'll give it a shot. But I don't think I'll be buying this game. If it's on Game Pass, of course, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll throw it on it's, PlayStation it's Plus. Really good, and I'm like I, I'm like oh this is actually really good. I'm having fun. Then maybe, but I don't see myself playing this. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm mine's at an all time low for this. I I don't really care. Honestly, this is a. Uh, I just wanted to come out so we can stop talking about it, frankly. No, yeah, for sure. <laughs> just so it's over. Yeah, like, I'm just like, all right, just get it over with. Yeah. Uh, this, there was a leaked uh, Hogwarts Legacy DLC, uh, mm. seemingly. Uh, so take this with some speculation because this could have been old or... Um, the the method to get this is uh, not not bad or anything, but they had to... So let me, let me start fresh. A Reddit user going by the name of Opelement, Opelement, Opel Element on Reddit found possible DLC of Hogwarts using the page source of their webpage. So, like, you know, they get the HTML file and read through it. Now, these all could have changes, but these is this is what they have found Thestro Mount, Dark Arts Cosmetic Pack, Dark Arts Battle Arena, Dark Arts Garrison Hat, 72 hours early access to the game, Kelpie Robe, a steel case floating ancient magic wand with book so this is uh, apparently this was all in that page source uh unclear if this is all one giant thing if these are multiple different editions i would assume this is probably multiple different editions um like for instance i know best buy does steel cases with like all their games if you like pre-order it early so that could be the steel case for that it could be in a special edition for the game the magic wand thing could be a physical collector's edition thing um the all that dark art stuff that's almost probably 
bonus of some type or like I, maybe like I a, think that's uh, guaranteed or something like that you know I, things like that yeah i think that's guaranteed to be either like an exclusive to someone like gamestop or will just be a pack that either you buy at launch or is in a deluxe edition fester amount seems like a easy pre-order bonus you pre-order oh, the game sure. you get a fester amount boom yeah. now that does tell you that you will be able to have mounts mount a festival <laughs> right so yeah. um you we did see you can get a broom so assumably the fester will replace your broom maybe now does that mean can i have buckbeak can i have a griffin <laughs> maybe that is, that, that is a possibility that is a possibility you can have a buckbeak <laughs> that is pretty very pretty sick now i did say take this with some speculation because we will cover something later on that might throw all this out just wanted yeah. to let everyone know though that was a thing that happened Alex, this That's is a big. Weird. This is a big one. This next one's big. Mm. Stick with me here. Jez mm. Gordon, as we often mention him on this show, he's up there with Jeffrey Grub uh, and um, Tom Henderson. Mm-hmm. Made waves this week, appearing on the Iron Lords podcast and dropped some pretty compelling information about possible hardware that Microsoft may be working on. When speaking about Xbox sales on the aforementioned podcast, quote: "What happens when they release their handheld in Japan?" And this is an answer to when um, one of the hosts, Lord Cognito, um, asked him uh, when, sorry, when they were like debating the Xbox sales in Japan, that was kind of the highlight of that segment. And he brought Mm -hmm. up what happens when they release their handheld in Japan. And then Lord Cog kind of pressed him on this. Uh, Will it be a native uh, handheld? And um, Jess Gordon kind of gets a little cute with it where he's like, oh, I'm just speculating here. But, you know, it's very clear that he probably has heard something um i'm going to get in whoa, what i think about this later but let me finish the story uh lord cog asks will it run natively or is this a cloud handheld jazz gave an answer meaning he does not fully know but gave this quote the keystone stuff is an operating system not necessarily hardware the keystone is something you would put into a handheld end quote alex this is something i grabbed uh all through his words uh this is about the ending of like i feel like the most interesting things from that conversation so he is That's weird he said speculative a lot i think he was just being cute with it i think he has heard something now i will preface all of this with saying there has probably been a handheld before that xbox has had that's what r&d does r&d yeah. makes random shit and they just have stuff for fun um, let's not forget that uh, I think it was PS4 had the controller that the con- deconnected connect. into two like move the, wands. You remember that? Like the Switch, yeah. Yeah, so R&D, I mean, that's what they do. They make stuff for fun and they see if it's viable in the market. I mm. think we already knew that there was something called an X-Boy. It was like a project name and they made like a portable Xbox system that played games. Like That's what R&D does. Is this what information Jez Gordon got? I, I don't know. Maybe this is a real thing. Maybe this is... Uh, I, I don't think it's crazy to say that they could make a handheld. It's probably pretty easy. I will say that in quotes. Easy as in like... For Microsoft, yeah, they throw in a couple hundred thousand, a few million dollars. Yeah, they make a, a handheld. Boom. Release it in Japan to see if it makes any money. I don't think it's crazy. I wanted to bring it up. I don't know if this is a real thing. I trust Jez Gordon. I trust Jez Gordon has heard that someone has seen a handheld. Is it going to make it to market is a completely different question. I just wanted to bring it up. That's very interesting. My worry is that last uh, my la- that last sentence. The Keystone stuff is an operating system, not necessarily hardware. Yeah. So the so key- the so the Keystone thing was supposed to be the 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 stick, the streaming stick. Correct. But if it's not a streaming stick, so it's not the key. Are they not making a streaming stick then? No, no, no. So his his point was like the Keystone is 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 a uh, a streaming stick. But what's running that is an operating system that they that they could use on other things. Okay, because this says yeah, because this says the Keystone is something you would put in put in and a handheld so i guess the, oh, so you're saying the keystone is something the operating system that you as, would add as in it's something that you could put into a handheld. got it okay yeah this is this is and so achievers the, these quotes sound or, weird because he's having a conversation so like gotcha so the it's hard so to, let's say whatever operating system that you the streaming stick would use is the same what a handheld would, would, would make use. sense to put in a handheld because it's, yeah. it's a cloud thing or it could be, it could be very similar to the 
Xbox app that's going in the Samsung thing. Yep. In the app. Yep. Maybe this is a test on... Maybe this whole reason they made this app is they wanted to test how it work on a TV with nothing. Mm-hmm. And now we can release a box that has a little bit of competing power in it. And then, yep. if that launches, maybe we, we launch a handheld. Who knows? Yep. Again, R&D does fucking random shit all the time so this would you buy it i'm not a big handheld guy um although i wish i was the vita is the which i still have right here the vita is what i've played i probably the most next to the ds uh i i i don't go places so i play them at home but sometimes i'd rather play tv so i'm not huge on handhelds xbox i think would be even less of a reason because they would probably never make an exclusive for it so I'd rather just play it on an Xbox. Yeah. Um, well, what if I'm? If my thing is like I'm wondering if they would do the th- the things. You know, like if you don't have the Samsung TVs, you know, just to do that, you can buy the said streaming thing or said handheld, and you can put and you can use that on your TV or whatever. Yeah, I I don't think that's crazy. Like, Some sort of remote the, play with the switch with the dock or whatever. Yeah. I don't Would think you do? Yeah, I feel like I probably get it because I don't feel like moving my system into the bedroom all the time. <laughs> That's a good point. You could play it like in bed or something like that. Yeah, uh, and also you could play it while your spouse watches something. So like these, mm-hmm. you know, these are good reasons. <laughs> well, we said I- with the switch. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's why. Yeah, yeah. That's why the switch is pretty convenient. Would yeah. I buy one? Probably just to have it. Would I use it? That's a different question. Um, I would probably have to have it to answer that. That's why I want a Steam yeah. Deck. Honestly, like I would love a Steam Deck. I'm not paying that that much money for one, but mm-hmm. I, I would I would love to have one. Just yeah, have an option to play my PC other places. I'm probably not gonna buy it. Though. I just love it that um everybody got Steam Decks. Be like, oh, not to play, you know. PC games, no. but pl- just to play emulators. So, I'm to, like, to pirate the shit out of a bunch of games. On. Hey, do you guys do you? I don't judge anyone. I play a uh, pirated game. No, I, don't, I play emulated games. I don't pirate games. No, I mean, I get um, that. I, do, I mean, if I do that, it would be on my PC. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot of people probably don't want to play on the PC. I, I, I think I, so it's easy to have the Steam Deck. So Because also, like when you buy a Steam Deck, not a lot of people are realizing this. You're buying a Nintendo 64, an SNES, an NES, a uh, uh, a GameCube, a PS2, a PS1, possibly a PS3, a 360, an Xbox original. If you have no, you know, if if you have no more problem with emulating games, you just bought ten systems in one handheld. So I, I, I get why people buy it. Will I ever get it? <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. I mean, it'd be sick to play Suikoden and Five on a handheld. Are you kidding me, bro? But. Probably not gonna do that. And that's a thousand dollars just gets dropped on me at once. Like, bro, no, I'm probably not is the Steam Deck a thousand? No, it's like five fifty. But like, oh. I, even if I got five fifty, I probably still wouldn't buy it. I'd do something else with it. So I'd need like more than that to go buy it. And For at sure. that point, I might just buy a PC. You know? So. Yep. <laughs> Anyways. That was the rumor roundup for the week. We're going into the actual news story. Uh, 40 minutes into the show, we're actually hitting the news for the week. Right. Uh, this is a pretty long one this week. Uh, it's got a lot of rumors and um, a lot of good write-ups just because it was a lot of uh, interesting topics this week. And also, we have a Nintendo Direct to go over. It will be very quick, though. So do not expect uh, too much on that Direct because we didn't care. <laughs> An interview with From Software's Hideka, Hideki? Hideki Miyazaki. The creative director of the studio and is seen as more of a Hideo uh, Kojima like figure. Someone like uh, a man behind the scenes putting together everything and gets a lot of the credit for the titles. Gave an interview with 4gamer.net, which is an unfortunate name given some other four related websites. Says some interesting things about the studio's future. When asked about uh, this previously in 2018, they said they were currently working on three titles, one of them, of course, being Elden Ring. But when asked an update to this, he gives this quote, quote, in fact, there are several titles directed by people other than um, that. And it's time to increase the number of developers. Now, this was all in Japanese. So I had to re- uh, rely on other people to give me what this means. So this is not verified by me. It's just verified by like 10 people that I all read about saying the same things. So one of them was an unannounced project is in its final stages of development. This is uh, assumably Armored Core because we... Uh, have heard a lot about that. Miyazaki intends to continue focusing on directing games is already working on his next game. 
Elden Ring will receive more updates like the previous titles, um, Dark Souls uh, 1, 2, 3, and um, Sekiro and things. So we'll get more Elden Ring um, details. I'm sure we'll get DLC soon. I wouldn't be shocked if it gets announced at the end of the year. Uh, so that's everything we have of the show. Anything that you want to uh, touch on before I move on, Alex, from this? I know you're a huge Elden Ring fan, so I'm sure this is exciting. Do you feel like it's crazy that he's already working on the next game? Because I feel like some people would be kind of upset. People would be like, "Well, you already are you already are you already abandoning Elden Ring? Will there be DLC? Like, do you feel that way?" I, no, because um, I understand how the games are developed. Like, he's a he's the director, right? His honestly, his part his job was done. <laughs> his job has probably been done for a few months. I mean, as far yeah. as I understand, Elden Ring was delayed a while, um, and they polished the hell out of that game. Uh, they just delayed it a few times and just sat there and just kept eliminating bugs and smoothing out the experience. So Didn't honestly, he he's Bloodborne? yeah, oh yeah, he's done. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's pre- he's pretty much the person behind all of the FromSoft all games. Of, them, yeah. of course, not Dark Souls Two. That's a whole that was the whole backlash about that game yeah. originally that yeah. he was not directing that game and that was a big hub blue thing. But yeah. uh, back to the story. Um, yeah, Bloodborne Two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, him moving on no that doesn't worry me or anything because he's probably already finished working on the dlc yeah so like they're probably just making it now he probably chimes in like how's everything going give me updates reads a bunch of stuff like all right do this 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 bows out working on whatever the next game is is it elden ring 2 you know i don't know i think it's armored core i i'm pretty positive it's going to be armored core to do something different um and also it's just been rumored for so long so i really do think it's armor core yep. the third game is what's interesting what else are they making i really don't know i i, w- I would be pretty shocked if it is bloodborne 2 but if it is that'd be fucking crazy that'd be yeah that'd be probably one of the biggest games what's well, crazy because it's Elden ring <laughs> really do you think we would get bloodborne 2 before a bloodborne remaster no because uh the bloodborne remaster is being made right now as we're talking by blue point so okay. blue point's uh, assumably is remastering Blood, uh, Bloodborne 1, polishing it up, learning how, what it is to make a Bloodborne, and then the rumor is they're going to make a second one, which is heavily rumored. I, I, know for, I know for a fact enough people have said that they are making a remastered Bloodborne 1. Maybe they're in partnership with some FromSoft, maybe not, I don't know. Maybe it's fully independent. Who knows? I believe PlayStation owns the IP, so mm-hmm. we'll see. Niantic has had a tumultuous time recently. According to a Bloom Over Hork, Niantic, the studio behind the mega hit Pokemon Go, has had to lay off about 90 people. Uh, Niantic CEO John Hank said the company was, quote, facing a time of economic turmoil and quote, justifying the cuts or trying to justify the cuts, at least. The company also had to cancel multiple projects, including um, Heavy Metal, a Transformer game, and Hamlet, which was a game that was being made with a, theor- uh, a theatrical company called Punch Drunk. Antic has been trying to get another hit other than Pokemon Go to little success. As a reminder, Harry Potter Wizards was something quite like that. Harry Potter's Wizards Unite was also canceled last January. Alex, I don't know if you have anything to really talk about this. I just wanted to bring this up. This is... This is a pretty big deal. Niantic having to cancel a good bit of projects and downsize their staff uh, seemingly because they just can't get anything else going other than Pokemon Go. I was going to say, I mean, really the only their only uh, um, source of income is Pokemon Go. And I mean, is is that really is that still even doing good right now? Yeah, who knows? I, they only they only do. I'm sure it's doing, you know, good enough. Right. Yeah. Is it doing mega numbers? I mean, clearly not because they had to cut staff. We don't know. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't think they've reported on numbers in a while. I would have to check on that. I don't know. But they may. They. I think. I mean, they've made well over a billion dollars on Pokemon Go. I think they were entering two billion dollar territory or something like that. So they've made a lot of money. So, but eventually you have to do something else, especially if you use that money to upsize. Now, I do think they had a recent surge in. Um, funding from someone but clearly even that wasn't enough i think they had like a 300 million dollar investment mm-hmm. uh, recently 
this is just an interesting thing I just wanted to bring up. The DFC Intelligence, a giant analyst and market forecaster for gaming, is saying that subscriptions will be the biggest dryer of revenue uh, coming up. So for 2022, the firm experts on software and consoles and PCs will be going to $72 billion. That's up from 5% last year, which is, which for, uh, first off, already broke a record. And of course, that it was attributed to coronavirus, people not being able to leave the house, so they bought video games. And then another one, a quote, a major driver of this growth is not going to be new releases, but increasing uses of subscription services for Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, and others. The console game business expected to see about a third of their software and service revenue going to the major three, Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. I wanted to bring this up only because a third of their revenue being solely subscription service is pretty insane. So I yeah. wanted to bring that up is if, you know, why people, you know, why are they uh, leaning into like Game Pass, Games of Gold, all these things is because they're looking probably in the long term and these things are going to be funding the majority of their money, which is regularly getting 60 bucks, you know, 60 bucks a year from uh, a majority of their fan base. And uh, we will probably not see a end to these types of services anytime soon. Oh, no. Sure. Yeah. I, th- I mean, even like it's crazy because even Nintendo, was, they didn't really have subscriptions and then they started doing subscriptions because they saw how much revenue it t- it's starting yep, to bring and in. They, and they clearly changed their model from the Wii. If you remember, the Wii had vi- uh, virtual console. People loved mm-hmm. virtual console. Yep. They bought all the games on there. And instead of doing that this time, they said, no, no, you're going to, you got to pay us it's on a service and you'll get that and you have to download yep. them and play it and like that and yep. they haven't released games really to buy they they want you to pay for the service because i think i think partly the reason because xbox and playstation have kind of set the standard like everything that's out now you're covered right if like in 10 years i'm gonna still own elden ring as an example yeah versus like for instance when i was had the original xbox and i bought perfect dark uh you know i it did i couldn't necessarily play perfect dark on the 360 because it wasn't packwork shadow not a great example because i think it was but uh, anyways as an example games in the past weren't necessarily going to earn you games of the future because they weren't digital now it's digital they literally have no reason to not move your library with you so i think that's part of the reason why nintendo doesn't want to sell you these things because they can bleed money out of you versus the one time mm-hmm. buy and you are always going to own this stuff yeah I, everything at this point pretty much has a subscription service other than steam i think i think i think so well i mean even I though you buy the game digitally sure. i mean like you keep but i don't think they have a subscription service i don't think like Ubisoft Plus has a thing, EA Play is a service. Uh, but Beth- no, Bethesda doesn't have Bethesda one. Bethesda was gonna do one, I think, but then they yeah. got bought out. They were, they were gonna make um, yeah. so Constellation or something. It was like Star based, and it was gonna be a streaming yeah. service. That thing was that thing. Is got- that a- no, I'm thinking of because there was a there was a thing that was supposed to come out that was supposed to it's called like Orion or something like that. Yeah, I think that's what it was called. I think that, it was, was called that, Orion. Was- yeah, Bethesda announced this, I want to say in 2018, 19, they announced Orion, which was going to be a subscription service, I believe, for their games. And, yeah. um, yeah, 2019. It was 2019, yeah. And, E3 2019. Yeah. And they were purchased, so why make it? Because Game Pass exists, so who cares? So they probably were just, they immediately dropped that, like, oh, who cares now? We got purchased. So, or maybe they sold yeah. the tech to, or gave the tech to Microsoft. Maybe that was some of the deal. Who knows? But yeah, that was a thing. And that, it just never hand out. I mean, Ubisoft has one. Grant the Photo Online has one. Um, but yeah, I think I agree. Uh, Steam is really the only thing that doesn't have it. Epic Game Store as well. They don't have one. Um, unless you include Fortnite, which don't really. But yeah, I mean, it's getting even granular to where just straight up games will have subscription services, which Jesus. Now, let's go quickly go over this Nintendo Direct that happened recently. Starting with everything that was revealed. Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak was shown and announced a free title updates throughout the year. Uh, June, uh, June 30th is the release, so uh, as of recording, you'll be able to play that right now. Nier Automata, end of Yorha edition, October 6th, so you'll be able to play Nier Automata on your Switch. Lorelei and the Laser Eye was uh, shown. Looks pretty cool. It looks like a PS1 game, kind of. Um, yeah. Like that kind of PS1 QB graphics. Kind of cool. Yeah. Super Bomber and R is coming to Switch, which if I remember correctly, was the Stadia exclusive. So, rip to that. 
Mega mm-hmm. Man, this got me kind of excited because I played these on Game Boy, I believe. Uh, Mega Man Battle Network Collection is coming, which annoyed me, Alex. So, of course, it's coming to Switch because it was there, but uh, I looked later. It's coming to PS4, Switch, and PC 2023. Where is Xbox? Why is it not coming to Xbox? Why? We have all of the other Mega Man collections. We have Mega Man Zero. Why are we not getting Battle Network? What the f- I was so, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why are we not getting this? So I'm that mad. that was I was a little upset. I was like, "Can you at least give me a reason, to Capcom? You really right. like why? Whatever." Pac Man World Repacked coming to Switch, Alex. I'm sure you're looking forward to that. Um, Blanc, which looks very this cool. Looks cool. This looks very cool. This is coming February yes. 23rd. As a reminder, if you watch the direct, this was the Deer and Baby Wolf. Mm-hmm, the black uh, and white the art style. It looks drawn very cool. Thing. It looks like you yeah. work together to move. Um, each other throughout environments. And it's co-op. And it, oh, it's a co-op. I, of course, it is. You I guess. Yeah. Co-op, I think it looks very cool. And uh, I, I know it's a weird thing, but the title is pretty sick. The C is Long, yeah. the C yep. is the the, 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 is, the yeah, wolf and the deer. It was it was very cool. I, mm-hmm. I, this uh, I'm gonna be honest. Like most of this, I was like, eh, can, eh. I'm excited for it because I want to give it a shot. The Battle Network, I was like, oh, this is cool. And then when Blanc came on, I was like, okay, this looks. I will buy this whenever this comes out. I think you were excited for this next game. Uh, Return of Monkey Island will be coming to Switch 2022. So yes, I'm very excited. Not yeah, for it coming you were to a very Switch. Monkey Island person. Yeah. So not not because of Switch, but because I'm just excited for the game. So this just got me more excited. We got much uh, uh, a much broader look at the game. Uh, it looks like Monkey Island, and it really makes me happy. It has that kind of corny-ish kind of uh, dialogue options and things. I cannot wait to play. Yeah, I cannot wait to play this. Uh, they uh, reshowed Mario and Rabbit Sparks of Hope coming October twentieth. Um, all those uh, Mario and Rabbit fans. Congrats, you're getting another one. I don't have anything to say about this. Mm-mm. Little Noah Scion of Paradise was out at, um, as one of their like out now titles. I'm going to mm-hmm. quickly look this up. Alex, do you remember this? I, I do remember it. It's, you- a, uh, it's, it's, it's a platforming adventure. Um, um, it is, yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember now. I, I'm seeing it. Yeah, yeah. With the little girl and the, and the cat. Not for me. <laughs> that's yeah. why i didn't remember it <laughs> yeah you're an alchemist noah and her cat companion zipper okay yeah that's why that's why rail grade yeah. for all you train fans out there i like oh, trains yeah yeah rail grade is out there for you go yeah. enjoy that nothing nothing for me it's basically um thrill it's a, it's a but typhoon for, game for yeah, yeah yeah it's a typhoon game yeah. um rpg Time? RPG time, yeah. Did I write this correctly? I believe Coming so, to yeah. Switch R- in August? Did I? Is yeah, it yeah. really just called that? I why, think so. Why don't I remember this? Yeah, it's the one where like it has the book or whatever, and you can like draw. And, like oh. it, there's like a booklet, and you can draw and yeah. what, what's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. This looked really cool, actually. Oh, and that's right. It was called um the Legend of Right. That's right. That that's why I was mm-hmm. weirded out about. Yeah, this looks on the surface really cool like what's mm-hmm. going on like you can like that they're drawing i want to play it just to see what the gameplay's like i was mm-hmm. kind of i'm kind of unclear on what you're like what you're doing like am i solving puzzles am i fighting things a little bit of both but i am interested in the game for sure it's coming to uh coming to switch in august alex sonic frontiers uh is being shown again this holiday in all of its uh uh, uh, dr- the the draw distance of this game kills me every time they show this because so you can my, just see popping everywhere, and I'm like, why are you showing this? So, well, first off, this is it trying to show it on the Switch. Terrible decision. <sighs> um, I feel like it'll run fine on the new systems, but Switch really broke. I'm like, some I I get that they're trying to put like a lot of th- more third party titles and things like that on Switch, but I don't know, man. That thing will um, probably it's like, not It's like look the good. Witcher. I was like, why? Like, can you, re- your Switch will blow up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I never understood the Witcher fan base wanting to play it on Switch. I mean, I guess it's cool that it's on a handheld, but like, yeah. It's mm. such a dumbed down experience. I, I don't understand. But hey, more power yeah. to you guys. I am not a Sonic guy. I don't care. So I have nothing I, to say about this. It, I honestly, will be playing I it. said this on Twitter, and this mm-hmm. is going to sound mean. I really don't get it. 
I, I don't get why people like this. This looks really fucking bad. And I mean and I mean it as a guy that's trying to like not disappoint people. This looks really bad. No, Maybe it, it's that's, good. That's, um, well, my, I, I made my it issue with it that you know, you I, I always get mad when they keep when with, with you know trailers, they just keep showing the game over and over again. <laughs> Gotham Knights. Um <laughs> I almost made Elijah throw up. <laughs> Touche, um, touche. I'm talking shit. I'm excited about Gotham Knights, and every no, time they show the that game, it looks awful. The thing is, this one's different because all they keep showing is Sonic mm -hmm. running through a field, running through a field, run up this black thing, running through a field. I'm like, give me just a story trailer, just like Sonic talking <laughs> to someone. What is the game about? That's a good like, question. What the like, hell is he I doing? Just, I, I want to see him speak to someone is he not have words do you oh. not have a narrative in this you're just running around fighting things you said rob dr eggman's in this that's a great Why question we see him just yeah. give me a Where nice like, cinematic trailer that's it just says, give me a cinematic trailer that's all i want just just know what the story is that is a I, great I'm, question i, I, I want to no see idea. his ass the whole time i'm gonna see his ass when i'm running <laughs> that is a great question i really don't understand what the narrative is, is about because they haven't told or shown anything yeah because so. i'm gonna play it but i'm just what is the game about? I mean, I get that they were like, oh, yeah, you're going to, you know, you're fighting these these things. You're in this new world. Just give me a give me a trailer. Uh, I, I, I made a joke on Twitter around the time this was like getting hyped. I said Sonic fans are so hungry that they're going to be they're excited about a seven. Like like my one of my favorite jokes that people were doing was like they were excited but they would preface it by saying it's probably going to be like a seven, but, it, but it's going to be fine. I was like, wow. I mean, Hey, at least, you know, but it's just crazy that you guys are so excited. And also, uh, another favorite thing that happened is all of the, <laughs> all of the fans saying to please delay the game <laughs> and the director coming out saying he's not going to do it. That is really fucking funny. I, that, that was I am, amazing. They're I like, please love, delay it. <laughs> I am going to love Oh. When the 2006 Sonic the Hedgehog game has more story and is a better game than this. Ooh, that that is not good. That's oof. That's I like I like at least that game had you could play Sonic Shadow and Silver. I'm not saying it's a me. I'm not saying it's a great game, but like let's hope it's not. A, let's say that wasn't better than this. <sighs> Disney Dream Valley is up next. Uh, early this, access will be September this. 6th. It is very much an Animal Crossing meets Disney princesses and things. Cool. I remember there was a the mobile, mobile game, game was very similar to this. Yep. Yeah, there Magic was a mobile Kingdom. game like this. I remember this. I think I played like ten seconds. I, I am. Uh, my wife and I played the, the heck out of it, and uh, we just fell through because you know, you know, it's so and much time you have to devote into a mobile game. That and eventually they're like, pay us. And it's like, yeah. So no, but it is, <laughs> this this looks so similar. So we're like, oh, we're we're definitely gonna play this. This is day one by for sure. Did you see the Disney Mirrorverse game? I want to play that. I I, oh, I tried playing it. I was like, damn, this I, could be a good game. It? Yeah, I was like, this could be a good game, but it's a mobile game. Closed it. Never gonna play it again. It has such potential, but it is a mobile game, and everyone yeah. knows what I mean when I say that. It's, I know what you mean. It's clearly. Yeah. They want as much fucking money out of you as they physically yep. can pull out of you. If yep. this was just a sixty dollar game, this would probably be very good. It's yeah. not, so I am fucking out. How cool that that would have been a great Marvel Ultimate Alliance type game. Ooh, that would yep. have been awesome. But God forbid they make a great game. Yep. Live Alive is getting a demo. It's available now. It's coming. I didn't. I'm sorry. I missed this. Achievers. Let me grab it real quick. I missed the release date. Release date. Um, I need to play. Um, oh my god, they gave me the original September, release date. Uh, Jul yeah. uh, July twenty second. July twenty second. Yeah, I, I want. Yeah, I want to try this game. I cannot wait. So the demo will actually cover, I think, three chapters, and will transfer your progress. Which yes, perfect. So I yes, may awesome. play this just because of that. Uh, I cannot wait for this. This looks so good. Yes, Alex, you're gonna have to help me with this one. It was, it was. This was Daroman. It's coming later this year. It, this had the dog guy on it. What it was the gameplay? Uh, hold on, because now the disturbed singer is popping up when I try to bring this up. Because <laughs> I think he's. Oh, it's Dora. Dora Monstoria Seasons. What is it about? Uh, 
Well, this thing. Okay. It is a... Oh my god, I like it. it won't tell me. Uh, yeah. There we go. Okay. Dora Nobi and their friends land on an unknown planet, decide whether to help a new friend fulfill his dreams by farming. Oh yeah, that, that's what this Nintendo Direct was about. It was all farming <laughs> shit. <laughs> that's right. Uh, in this farm sim adventure game, plow the fields, harvest crops, and tend to the animals. You can even use Doramon's secret gadgets to farm in a flash. Cool. Minecraft Legends okay. is coming to Switch. <laughs> that's all they said. Dragon so Quest. Looks, yeah. No, I'm, I'm joking. If you wanted to yeah. uh, mention something about it, I I have nothing to say because I mean it looks cool, but I, I'm it, not gonna play. It this reminds game. me a lot of just a Dynasty Warrior games. Is that what this is? It looks like it's, it's supposed to be version. an RTS type thing that okay. you're like top down. I honestly, it looks like three games put into one. It looks like half Diablo with like XCOM ish type shit. Like I don't know. Mm-hmm. We'll have to see. I really, I'm kind of confused. Just like this next game, Dragon Quest Treasures uh, is coming out December 9th. I don't even know what this is. Is this another Builders-like game? Because it says Treasures, and it looks like you're mining for things. You're, I saw when it would look like it, it was you're running around and you're doing shit. No Man's Sky is coming to Switch uh, October Why? 7th, which... Am this I crazy? This going to blow up your Switch. Am I crazy? No, I think it can... I think it's Switch. No Man's Sky, I, mean, I thought was already on Switch. Am I crazy? I was not on Switch. I thought it was. I I, I must be wrong. So yeah, it's coming to Switch. Tried it. Yeah, you, yeah, that's true. No, yeah, I was wrong. Okay, my bad. I mean, I, I will try when it to, when just I to saw, see how, how when, crazy it's gonna run. When I saw it, I was like, "Is this not on Switch already?" Like, I, I was like, "Am I crazy?" <laughs> I'm gonna give it thirty minutes before my Switch starts heating up. Speaking of heating up, Plague Tale Requiem is going to be coming uh, on the release date of Plague Tale Requiem, which I think is October 16th. It will be a cloud version, which means uh, have a good connection. I'll just say mm-hmm. that. It will be running off the cloud. Good luck. Captain Velvet Meteor coming to Switch. I have nothing to say about this, Alex. Is this another farming game? Probably. Portal Companion Collection out now. Honestly, tempted to buy it. Probably right? won't, but I was very tempted. I love Portal. Harvest Stella, which is a Square Enix game, November 4th. That's the farming game. It's another farming game, yes. Uh, cool. I was half interested, but I'm like, one of those interested where I'm like, November is probably going to be too busy for me so to I give a shit about this. So I was interested in the Stella part. Like, the, everything about the RPG mechanics looked awesome. And, and then when you come but back... when you get to the like, harvest nah. part, you're like, nah. Because <laughs> it gave me a lot of Tales vibes, and then it was like, plow your stuff. I'm like, no. <laughs> I love that. I was interested in Stella, but the harvest, no thanks. <laughs> like, I love yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, that you kind of put it pretty well there. Like, I was interested in half of it, and then they started watering plants, and I was like, nah, I'm good. Thanks, though. Yeah. They ended the conference with Persona 5 Royal coming to Switch October 21st. And they said the Persona collection will um, be coming to Switch as well. Very cool. Um, that yep. was the Nintendo Direct. Alex, I know uh, this was not a this was not an Alex Direct at all. So uh, I had like you, two, maybe maybe three games. Yeah, I had five ish. So much farming, um, man. But yeah, I'm not too into this, honestly. Uh, we'll see. I, I'm waiting on the big hitters. That's what's going to make me pick up a Switch. Um, mm-hmm. The exclusives. It's it's not going to be any of this. Um, mm-hmm. I'll play Live a Live. I'll play RPG Time probably if it doesn't come to anything else. Um, honestly, half the time I watch this to see what games that didn't get announced for Xbox and PS5 that I'm going to play instead of on Switch. You know what I mean? Like, because a lot of games are third party. So it's like they'll announce it there, but it's coming to other things. So I'll just play it anywhere else. But like, you yeah. know, Return of Monkey Island, of course, that was fun. So. Like these yeah. things are cool. It's just I'm not playing it on my Switch. No, for sure. Like like Persona, really? No, on Xbox yeah. for sure. Awesome. Ha- super happy for a Switch. Uh, for sure. For yeah. uh, for Switch fans. For me personally, I don't care because I'm playing this on my. Yeah, Xbox. I'm sure it run great, but like right now, I'm playing Persona Four Golden on my Vita just because I want the trophies. <laughs> my like, I'm sure it runs great on Switch, but I don't get trophies. Yeah, or that's another on thing too. It's like oh, I don't get anything. So like, like I'm not, like sucks. I know I I know Switch doesn't have to do it, but I would I wish they had some sort of like achievement or trophy. Imagine system. when they do, whenever they do that and they make like Super Mario Three like have achievements. People are gonna how go many nuts. people? How many people do you think are gonna be up, upset about that? 
No, man. Like, do, you, do you think there's going to be more people upset with adding that? They're going to no, be all those trash people are going to be like, oh, you, you now you need to make it to where, you know, it's just a game for fun. And so now you got to. I think, I think, um, I think a lot of old people probably think that. I think a mo- majority, it's so easy to ignore. So, like, mm-hmm. like, even on Xbox and PlayStation, you can turn off those, like, you never have to see them. Mm-hmm. Like, achievements and trophies. So, like, it's so easy to ignore. Like, I don't think anyone would care. I think more i think say i mean there's no reason to really not have it at this point it's it's really just a lot of the older people just don't want it there Mm -hmm. whatever an interview with troy levitt let's talk about this troy levitt the ex-lead designer of hogwarts legacy if you guys remember he resigned over some political issues that people had um problems great uh uh, surrounding kind of the jk rowling thing they i think we're looking for reasons uh to pick apart the game and Troy Levitt was one of those people. Gave an interview on uh, a podcast called Podcast Now and gave some details about the upcoming set uh, of the upcoming game set in the Harry Potter universe. Now, I did want to first apologize because this is going to be a user on Reddit's transcription. I did not have time to listen to the whole thing like I did with the Lord, uh, the Iron Lord of, of gaming people earlier. I just didn't have time to listen to that whole thing. So this is going to be a... Uh, trans uh a lot of the bigger points from a transcription from a user um called cynics on reddit so thank you cynics on reddit for this so take all this with a grain of salt even troy mentions it because it, all this could change like he he's been a while now it's probably been two years now since he's been a part of the studio so you know that's game development it might as well have been 100 years so let's start with the top uh the staircases in the original channel are different than what they are now they came up with that in a way to make uh the staircases uh, be faster so you can get around the school quicker uh, I, I assume um he says cheekily it would be crazy if things didn't change with the seasons right mentioning that the hogwarts will change with seasons so most likely you'll have different decorations which i believe is a thing in the books and the movies you can ne- you can tell what type of year it is based on what hogwarts looks like so that's going to mm-hmm. be something in the game. They that's want to awesome. take the best thing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. They want to take the best things from the Wizarding World and put them in the game. Uh, if you, uh, the Wizarding World, of course, is what Harry Potter's universe is called. Just as a mm-hmm. reminder, Hogsmeade is awesome, guys. This is a direct quote. Sorry, quote: Hogsmeade is awesome, guys. I can't wait for you to see more of it. End quote. He believes Sebastian's story is supreme, and he enjoys it the most. I believe Sebastian is. Can actually, actually, can you double check me on this? I believe that's the Hufflepuff guy. Double check me on that one, please. They gave you, quote, the skeleton, end quote, of the game in the state of play. There's going to be a lot more. Take the DLC leaks with a grain of salt. That's what I said with the previous thing. Um, that's why I said that we might have the grain of salt earlier, because the, the guy said, take it with a grain of salt. Now, again, he's been gone for a long time. Things could change. He even mentions that. We'll see. Sebastian Sli- Solo is, a sli- is the Slytherin He's companion. the Slytherin guy. That's right. Yeah, he's yeah, he's like the I think he's getting bullied in the trailers or something. I don't remember. Uh quote, Maybe. Hogwarts Legacy was almost fully populated by Avalanche employees, end quote. So uh all of the NPCs are named after Avalanche employees, which is pretty cool. That's, I, I, that's, I, pretty, cool. I, that's pretty cool. You get to see yourself in the game, that's pretty cool. Quote, oh, we name, ran out of cool. names because there were so many NPCs, so I had to start making up names. End quote. Wow. I, that's pretty crazy. I guess you can interact with like all of the kids that are just walking around is they what I assume. Like petition. They should have done like a little petition thing, like a little list and be like, oh, if you want your if you want to have a chance for your name to be in the game or whatever, you know, t- yeah, you know, sign up or whatever. And then they'll tell you like, oh, yeah, hey, you're, you know, your name is one of these characters or whatever. That would be kind of great. Yeah. yeah. Um, in the early days on the whiteboard, there was a focus on, quote, fan fantasies, end quote, which put an emphasis on what fans dream of having. And they are trying to put as much as that uh, as possible in the game. So I get to have bug peek. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the development is most likely in the bug fixing stage now, which I think is pretty safe to say. I, mm-hmm. I, I want to say that I think it's safe to say the game is probably finished now. As far as I uh, have heard from several people on the uh, uh, in the know, the game has had issues. That's why it got delayed. So presumably they're fixing the game like they're probably polishing a bunch of stuff. Um, I, I, you could probably play the game start to finish. I wouldn't be shocked by now, um, but we'll have to see. Uh, quote, it's a game made by fans for fans, end quote. 
main NPC characters uh, development is one of their main priorities. So you're probably main companions. J.K. Rowling is not involved with the gameplay and story. He is frustrated about people starting political arguments about the game. However, the team does not pay much attention to it, which is good. And of course, this is uh, reading from the person. The delay in it is good. Uh, mm. Let's focus on the game. The delay was not to add more features to the game. It was more due to the impact of COVID, which makes sense. He would have, quote, oh, wow moments, end quote, all the time due to the incredible work of the artists. Cool. Um, they explored ideas of friendships and relationships and rivalries in the game. Unclear if he's mentioning if they'll be in the game or not. Um, they've most likely only thought and focused on Hogwarts Legacy and haven't thought about making it a franchise yet. If it becomes successful, it could be a consideration, which is pretty good. You should make a good game first before you try making a franchise. Um, looking at you, Harry Potter. <laughs> um, they had that issue with the newest movies. Avalanche is focusing on making a great Wizarding World experience, and depending on the success, they may think about the franchise and a possibility of more future games. And this is a funny one. Troy made a goofy NPC name called Grippy Wifferton in hopes that it stays in the game. <laughs> I will be looking out for Griffy Wifferton uh, uh, just for you, Troy Levitt. So there's one issue that I, I noticed that they don't even mention at all because I'm so concerned about. Go ahead. Do, do we know? So they showed off the, the like the character that you can play either male or female yep but it seems like you're that specific character but that's not you, you that's not your character that you can make you can just change the hair but that's about it yeah, you can't I... make him look completely different you can't make him you so they're i'm assuming so they haven't really said it'd be like hey this there's just one generic character they this is your character you can change the cup uh, you can change you know the hair color and that's about and that's it you can't really change its face you can't really change its skin color you're this character or, or the male or female so i want to say there are presets and they showed that off in the state of play so i think you can definitely change the skin color but i think they're presets um because okay. i because okay because they even made it to where you can change your pronouns in the game as a way of trying to support transgender people if they had issues with yeah. buying hardware. So you see they want to see like, hey, will we support you? So I believe they even implemented that you can change your pronouns in the game. So, uh, Or you can at least make them transgender in some way, whatever that means. Yeah, um, yeah, you'll be able... Yeah, well, uh, well, no, this says will likely. Yeah, that gives a look. Yeah, Gamer Rant. This is from the state of play. Yeah, if you remember, you were able to change stuff. Um... It is it's very parents. brief. Okay. Uh, two faces are sewn, script splits in the middle, one face masculine, one face feminine. With a few seconds of, uh, they show off several faces, hairstyles, alterations like scars and beauty marks, and it's a glimpse at the full character creation. You could change your, your faces pretty, pretty. Okay, this, yeah, I found something that says, uh, to, to change your appearance, it will give you options between nose, face, eyes, eyebrows, lip shades, and as well as skin, skin, as skin, hair, and eye. Okay. That's what my issue was concerned because I don't remember it then like it, like being able to change and I was I was like uh, I don't know like is it just because when I remember it I thought it all they were showing was like that you could just change the hair color and I'm like well are so are we just that character? No, you you're able to change a good bit. Okay. Like, well, a good bit in reference to like like that specific character i don't know how mm -hmm. deep it like, would be like maybe that, there's only 10 hairstyles we'll yeah it's not like extensive like like oh like the bethesda games like elder scrolls or yeah, Fallout, yeah. things like that it's just something simplistic yeah like fallout 4 i feel like had a pretty good one it won't yeah. probably be like that it'll probably yeah. be like do you want a big nose or a medium nose yeah. or a medium medium nose you know like Oh, anything before we move on i know um this is something you and me are very excited about but yes. i i at this point i'm i'm waiting on the game i don't really care about this stuff. no yeah I'm, I'm i i know i'm gonna love the game so i have no issues yep Politari at the U.S. Boston-based studio has been acquired by Blizzard to bolster the staff on their giant MMORPG World of Warcraft. Politari at the studio behind the Battle Royale Spellbreak will be dissolved into Blizzard to help with the expansion and updates of their title, World of Warcraft. Spellbreak, it's the game itself, will be shut down earlier next year. Spellbreak launched on uh, launched on just about everything on September 3rd, 2022. Never reached the highs of other battle royales that surrounded it and eventually uh, was snuffed out. Unclear if this purchase is because of the talent crisis that is plaguing many developers or if the studio was just looking for a way out before they had to close down or maybe it's a bit of both. 
um, Alex, I want to say it was about 100 people they acquired from Proletariat. So they bought wow. the studio outright, literally just for the staff. So I feel like that speaks a lot about the labor shortages right now. People, mm-hmm. uh, that, I mean, that's that's pretty telling. You literally bought them just to hire them. Think about that. So interesting. I um, never played Spellbreak, so I have nothing to say. I just wanted to I let everyone know. Either. I feel bad for the people who have been playing the game because I'm sure they had their fan base, but it will be gone early next year. Mm-hmm. It was like it's like that game Paragon on PlayStation. It was like doing well. It was like it was a very uh, a lot. The fans love that game, and then it just and went it away. just disappeared too. Which I always I feel bad about those games. Snips. It was fun. If I always feel bad about the games, and that kind of happened to me, Marvel Heroes Omega. Yes, yeah, happened, I remember that. Yeah. Um, where it just disappears, and you're like, damn, all that money I spent is gone now. Uh, Marvel Heroes Omega uh, Xbox actually refunded me because I had just bought Venom about mm. two months before they just closed like because if you remember marvel heroes omega closed in like a month they're like it's gone mm. we're gone it's over uh yeah. and they like refunded me the money and stuff that that's always crazy to me like it sucks that these games are going away because i imagine a lot of people have spent a good money and now you have nothing to show other than you know the memories but it, it's, no, it sure. sucks that that is now gone for people cyberpunk is back in the headlines after some uh after some time due to a whistleblower According to YouTuber Upper Echelon Gamers, who has a history of report, by the way, quite the name, bro, who has a history of reporting on cyberpunk issues, has a 72 page document that focuses on Quantic Labs, a QA company who did a lot of testing for CD Projekt Red on the game, um, said that they, that among other things, uh, they over exaggerated the size of their team working on Cyberpunk 2077 in order to keep the contract, said that the team was made of mostly senior staff, but in, but instead was made up of juniors with under six months of QA work, and that they had a daily quota of reported bugs, which led to CG Project Red getting thousands of pointless bugs from testers, wasting time and not prioritizing game breaking issues. Now, this doesn't end here. Apparently, this sparked Legacy Killer, which I believe is also a YouTuber, to say this. It was being overblown, stating that, quote, as one developer told me, um, in another quote, we knew about the bugs that people were complaining about. This was not something that was unknown to us, but we did not have time to focus on it. We were crunching like crazy, so we were paper thin at the end, end quote. He goes on to say that all the people involved in the game knew about the bugs, even higher management, since they were, quote, playing the game all day, every day, end quote. Uh, this is, I, I think it's a little overstating saying this had caused drama, really. But a lot mm. of people were talking about this saying uh, Quantic Labs may, may have lied to CG Project Red. Maybe CG Project Red is looking to put the blame on someone. Uh, maybe the whistleblower is just trying to uh, uh, just get some drama out there about this. Who knows? Uh, I will, I'm going to be honest here, and I'll be curious to see if you even have anything to say about this alex but i i I don't have i don't really care Uh, it's it's been two years now uh i think we all know everyone involved has some fault everyone to like the qa heads to the uh biggest exec at the thing to the shareholders uh, maybe not the shareholders but almost everyone involved knew what the game was like so like at this point i mean i could care less who fault it is it's probably everyone's yeah i mean at this point move on (laughs) <laughs> yeah i don't i don't really care but i wanted to bring it up because it is news i'll be curious if any achievers out there care always let us know comments below yep and that is the end of the news for the week let's close out with some date updates and let's get going plague tale requiem is releasing october 8th previously stated in the show uh coming to playstation plus essentials in july crash bandicoot 4 alex man of mm. madon oh! one of the one of the games that you wanted to play and yep. arcade again which i heard interesting things about i don't remember if they're bad things or good things i'll have to figure that out um and just as a reminder Mega Man battle network collection was announced for everything switch ps4 and pc games with gold is as followed <sighs> beasts of Marivilla island available from july 1st to 31st relicta that sounds like an interesting Relicta. name for a game. Mm-hmm. Available July 16th to August 15th. Thrillville Off the Rails, which people love. July yep. 1st to the 15th. Torchlight, which is a game people love very much. July 16th to the 31st. Definitely better than the weeks we've had prior, especially oh, yeah, with Thrillville and Torchlight. I cannot speak to Beasts or Relicta, 
But, yeah, I like to look, I watched the trailer for it. It looks it looks fun. It's a first person puzzle solving game within and um you have like I don't know if it's like gravity or magic powers, but like you get you have to move things around to solve puzzles, things like that, or like around. I can't tell if you're like in a forest or something, but it looks it looks pretty cool. We'll have to see. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Thoroughville for sure. And I I always heard Torchlight was good, so I definitely have to try that. Remember, claim all of these because they are all yep. free c- included with your subscription payment. Mm-hmm. And then Man of Medan, of course, I will play that. Epic Games Store will have Killing Floor 2 and Ancient Enemies as free titles starting July 7th to July 14th. Did you ever play those Killing Floor games? I've always heard they were fun. No, it was one of those games where when I worked at GameStop, like you sell a lot of but never hear anything about it. So mm-hmm. like people would buy it and I'd be like, I wonder if this is good. And they're like, I don't know. I'm just bored. I don't know. And yeah. I'd give it to him and be like, all right, see you later. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, maybe. I mean, I never really. I mean, I heard bad stuff and I heard good stuff. So I don't. I have no idea. Yeah, for sure. It definitely looks generic. At least the cover. Like the cover it's was like, like eh, this looks like. It's like the one game. I keep I keep wanting to try it because I feel it, all of the covers look cool. Uh, Zombie Army thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be all the trilogy games. Yes, yeah. There's like yes. 70 of them. Yeah. Yeah. That was like, another thing, cool. just very much like Killing Four, where people would always buy it and they'd be like, oh, I'm gonna go mess around. And like and I think it it's good? it's a good, <laughs> dumb, fun game. I think they're like yeah. it's like watching um Rambo's not a great example because those are good. I mean, those are good movies, but it's like those where you're like, I just want to see shit blow up. Like oh, yeah. I think it's like that, where you're like, I just wanna uh, like two weeks ago. I need to watch them. I, I, I I've watched I, I was little, but I watched Rambo First Blood mm-hmm. and Rambo Two. Two is when he goes he goes back to Vietnam. That one. Okay. Yeah. I remember the um, when he's holding the MG twenty four and shooting at the hill and he kills like a hundred people or some crazy oh, no, shit like that. That's that's um that's, that's, uh, that's three. That's just that's, no, that's just Rambo. That's um that's that, the two thousand. That's the early two thousands where you're talking about where he's like like all buff and stuff and he's yeah. like and he's like oh yeah that's the one before the last before Last Blood it was that was so okay. Rambo four so it was Rambo four. Okay, so maybe I watched that one and two. I don't. I'm gonna have to watch them again. Because mm-hmm. maybe I didn't watch the first one. Yeah, because well, two is when he goes back to Vietnam. Uh, so because he has to, he has to save some people. He has to save his Three. friend, right? I can't remember. I think so. Yeah, his it's his, his yeah. old like commanding officer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think well, I watched that's that one. the third one. Because no, that's the third one. I'm sorry. That's the, he's like in the desert area. And he's is that like, the one with the when he gets the explosive like, arrows? Is that the one? I, I think I watched that two. one. That's, oh, that's two. two. Maybe I did yes. watch two. Three, where he was like shirtless and he has the MG gun or whatever, and he's in like in the deserty area. Maybe I, I might have watched three and Rambo. I'll have to. Find. There's I so gotta many. Watch, I gotta watch. Like, it's, it's hard. It's hard. It's like Rocky, where you mix them up because they're Rocky, so similar. Oh my God, yeah. I thought about redoing Rocky because I wanted to watch re rewatch Creed one and oh. two. But I, I was need like, to watch I Creed two. I, Creed one is so good. Have you Have you never watched Creed two? Oh, 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 I got to. I got to. Okay. It's just as good as one, but I feel, I I don't know. It's like, I can't remember if it's any better or worse. Insanely good. Like, one of the best movies I've ever seen. Michael B. Jordan just does a fantastic job. Acting is insane. His physique is incredible. He was cut. He was so cut. Yeah. Alex, we end the show just like we sort of begin it with a question. One singular question that is not only for you, it's for everyone listening. At home, this is what's cued. Now, this, of course, can be a game, a comic book, a book, TV show, a podcast, anything really. What do you have queued up going into the weekend? So much. I have, I will be finishing The Quarry mm. tonight, hopefully. I will try to also finish it. That'd be a good spoiler cast, I feel like. Mm-hmm. If Yeah, if not, I'll try to finish it tomorrow. But since it's because I want to do at least one playthrough before I do a second playthrough. Okay. Because uh, once I'm done, I want to see if I've gotten everybody alive. Because there's an achievement where you save everybody and then there's one where you kill everybody. So I want to get those both achievements just so I could probably run through that pretty quick. Yeah. And then uh, tomorrow, Stranger Things Part 2. Is it tomorrow? Season. Yeah. Oh, wow. I got to catch up. Yep. So July, yeah, July 1st is tomorrow. Okay. Oof. All right. So yeah. So I will. Yeah, because there's there's only thirty days in June, right? 
Yes. Okay. Then yeah, tomorrow. Yep. So yeah. So then tomorrow. Uh, so I'll be watching that. Probably will finish that by the end of the week. And then there was something else. I wanted a. Oh, I wanted to start watching the boys because I wanted to, uh, to be like to the second last second to last episode. Two episodes left. Yeah. So I figured me as I'm as I'm done with Stranger Things. That week will be there will only be one episode left, and then I'm I'll be caught up. So I can next week I'll watch, I'll binge watch the boys. Yeah, because I've been spoiled. I haven't seen anything. I don't want to see anything. Bro, it's so good. Yeah, we get the new episode tomorrow, so I'll be watching uh the, that boys, and then we'll have the penultimate one after that. And this show is I I can already tell it's gonna end wild because of what what happened in the last episode is like so so oh. far. Can you rate it if it was better than season one or season two? This is or the best season. It's really so far. Oh yeah, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think it. I think. Uh, I think it, it's close to the it, it, Huey. I think the only thing you have to put into account is two is so good with the twists, mm-hmm. but three has already been good. The dialogue's wow. on point. The okay. everyone's acting is on point. I it's like everyone t- brought their fucking ten to this. Dude, bro. It, it's. I love when there's great acting. It's like Ozark with Ruth and be like, you go. Yeah. Like one of my that- favorite scenes in all of cinema now is, is if you want to stop me, you're going to have to fucking kill me. And I'm like, and I'm like, ah, and I'm freaking the fuck out. Everybody's looking at this scene and be like, hire her. Hire her. <laughs> Everyone's throwing money. Like get her, get her in my project now. Did you she's see in, a- she's in some show now, isn't she? Or yeah. movie? No, she. I think it was. I think it was before. Oh, was or it maybe before now? But I know there is. She's a rumor of uh, playing Madonna for her auto. Bi- is it auto biopsy? I think that's what you call them. The the, the, the a, you know how Elvis just had one. Uh, the the, the biopic, the right? Thank you. That. Yeah, biopic. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, she's playing she's possibly playing Madonna. Okay, and I'm like, oh, that's oh. kind of sick. Yeah, she can do it. Whatever she wants to do, I'm sure she can do it. So we'll see. She, she got the hair. She got the curly blonde hair. Yep, she's so cool. Yeah. She's oh so cool. yeah. Um, what do I have queued up? I prob. I might get back to Persona Five Strikers. I'm not. I would. Okay. I'm having trouble getting into it. Yeah. Um, just because the the combat gets stale really fast. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to get past the combat, even yeah. if it's a, it's a it, like it's the story like good because it, it is it's, it's persona. So like it's like I want to figure out what's going on with the character that you meet. I'm blanking on her name right now, but I want to see why why are we back? Like why are we doing all this? Like I want to know why. It's just like take the road that I do and just put the bitch on very I sh- easy. I think I and should just, and just run. I really think I should. I think I should throw it on very easy and just hit <laughs> square difficulty. And so even if there was. I'd rather beat it on easy and then like, never beat it in because it's so I boring. Think that Persona Five. I love the game. I plan them to. I mean, yeah, people are gonna be like, "Oh, you didn't do it on normal." I'm Who like, cares? I don't care. I wanted the story. If you're playing Persona for the difficulty, you gotta figure out find another game. I'm playing games for the story. I don't care for the difficulty, except Dark Souls. Oh, for sure. Well, well I, yeah, that I just had to get good, and I love those games. I'll be going back to Fire Emblem, of course. That'll be an easy one to to slowly scrape away, but um, I think cyberpunk, a lot of cyberpunk in my future. Um, Stranger Things, of course, I'll be finishing mm-hmm. out. Uh, Boys, probably tomorrow, and that's sh- that should be it. We're watching Game of Thrones again, just because it's it's been we've never honestly we've never watched it again. So we're just whenever we I have some time I've together, me and the twice. wife, huh? I think I've I think I've watched it twice. So you've done one rewatch probably. Or at least yes, close to I've done, it. Then the original and then a rewatch. So I've only yeah. done the original. So me, okay. me and the wife are doing a rewatch. We're gonna see what we think about. It. It's crazy how much they build up later on. Like I really never mm-hmm. realized how much they build up in that first season. Like mm-hmm. it's, I was like, wow, this doesn't pay off until four seasons later. Like it's crazy mm-hmm. that this is that's real. So, well, it's, I'll I'll keep on people just because it's fun. I love Game of Thrones. So yeah, and until we get to season. Five and six. I love Game of Thrones, so yeah. I'll see. We'll see where it goes. But that's all I got for me. Anything you want to leave the achievers with until we? Until, well, I, I, I actually forgot. This is your last week for a while, Mister. You will probably not be here. 
maybe yeah. maybe not yeah so yeah. i forgot about that i almost i almost signed off without saying that so yeah yep. you might the be the baby wants to come yeah so you might you might you may not be here next week we'll see yeah. we'll yeah, see yeah between, between right now and like nine days i'm like it's a it's a dice it's, roll it, yeah every day you wake happening. up it's like all right, it's not, not happening yet. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. So, uh, but achievers, of course, we will still go. And I have Emmett Watkins Jr. himself on standby for whenever this man decides that yeah, I'm gonna have another child right now. So we will see. Yep. And we're very excited for you, of course, Alex. I think I speak for all the achievers. Uh, yep. Good luck. Uh, I'm sorry you will not be able to sleep for a while whenever this happens. You know what? I'm not sleeping now, so I'm used to it. <laughs> You're like, I, I'm prepping it up. I'm like, prepping it up. <laughs> exactly. I have them hidden. <laughs> Thank you so much, Achievers, for joining us this week. We hopefully will see you next week. And until I then. I got my hammer ready. In, and my axe. <laughs> <laughs> until then, go, Chief. Go, Chief. <laughs>